Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create lower thirds inside of Adobe Premiere. Now, I always prefer using After Effects when it comes to creating motion graphics, but I like to take a look at how we can do it inside of Premiere. So first things first, you kind of want to determine a design for your lower third. I always suggest, you know, looking at, you know, templates on, you know, Video Hive or any other sort of stock sharing, um, you know, website out there. But we're going to go ahead and create one of these in here and I'm going to show you how to do it. And there'll be a lot of cool techniques in this tutorial. Let's get started. So first things first, let's type out our text. So go up to File, New, Legacy Title, and click OK. Grab your Type Tool and type out your text. So obviously there should be at least maybe two titles when you do this sort of thing. So uh, I suggest you know do it in all caps sometimes so you can think about this. So this is all about the graphic design. So first things first, I have my name, Joshua Noel. And I'm going to find a typeface that works great. So I'm going to use Gotham. And I would suggest using a typeface that has variations in the uh, style. So I'm going to make this book. And then I'm going to make my first name here. I'm going to go to maybe bold, right? So we, there is obviously a parent contrast. It's hard to see, but you'll see it in a second. So there's my name. And I'm come over here and drag it into the timeline. And as you see, there's contrast between my first name and last name. And that's just in the design. Now we want to create a subtitle. So... I'm going to come over here and I can duplicate this, so copy, paste it, double click it, come back in here and I'll come over here and just type out the subtitle, so it's going to be like the position name or, you know, name of a company, so I'm just going to put uh, Sunduck Film and I might want to come here and just position it downward, just using the arrow keys to move it and of course we want to decrease the font size by a little bit and create more of a variation here so it doesn't necessarily blend in with everything. And maybe we'll set it to regular or something medium. So you can also increase the tracking and play with that by a little bit and continue to work with what you have. Okay, when you're done, bring it back into the timeline. And there is your text. So we have our title. Our, so now we have our name and our subtitle. And I'm going to go back into our name and I'm going to create a, a primary color. So I'm going to select my name, Joshua. And I'm going to just select a color in here that I think would create some, you know, nice contrast in here, some nice color contrast. So usually you would just take a color of like a logo, but in this case, I'm just going to use blue for any case there. Okay, so let's talk about the background or the plate of the lower third. So let's come over here to this new item icon at the bottom here, and we're going to click on color mat and click OK, 1920 by 1080, whatever the size of your composition is, it doesn't really matter because we're going to manipulate it. So grab a color, so I'm going to do like a, for now, like a dark gray here, click OK, and that's fine, bring it into the timeline, and we kind of just get this background in here, nothing flashy. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck uniform scale, and we're going to manipulate, oops, sorry, that was the wrong layer, make sure the color mat is selected, and click on uniform scale to uncheck it, and you can decrease the height, to come about there and also you can decrease the width and then use the position tools over here to put it right above or right underneath your uh, your name here make sure that layer is underneath the title in the timeline and just go ahead and start positioning this out just to the point where you like it then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this color mat and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in the timeline so we have another variation here and put it underneath all of our work so far so I'll put it right there and then I'm also going to do it for the subtitle. So come over here and do our position. And we might need to, of course, decrease the uh, the height by a little bit as it's a little bit smaller for the subtitle smaller. So do like five. And then we'll close up the scale width by a touch and position this back over. So far, we have a decent lower third in here. Now we can start talking about animating it and then refining it towards the end of the tutorial. So the first things first with the animation, I want to do just some very simple position animations that are very subtle and will work nicely here inside of Premiere. To start this animation, go to the effects window, go into the video effects, go to transition, and we're going to add a linear wipes all the way here in the corner of my uh, recording here. So boom, put that onto the color map. And if you increase the transition completion, you can see that we can start to animate this by a little bit. So what we can do is set the wipe angle to negative 90 degrees. Add a keyframe for transition completion, move this keyframe forward in time to maybe like two seconds, and increase the transition completion to 100%. So now we'll just have that in there, and we'll see our lower third, no worries. And right click the keyframe here, go to Bezier. So kind of like slow down towards the end, and that should be cool. 
Okay, so let's say we want to take this a little bit further and have just a little bit more design to it. Um, what we can do is let's bring both of these titles up by a couple of layers here. And once again, let's duplicate our color mat we just animated. And let's bring this over here. So what I want to do is go to the color mat in the timeline. And I want to duplicate that. And then bring it back into our timeline. And I want to right click our color mat here in the timeline that we've been manipulating. And click on copy. Go to the new mat here in the timeline and paste attributes click OK and now it's basically the same thing it's just on a separate layer and what I'm gonna do here is double click it and I want to change the color to white or I can change it to blue it doesn't really matter I'll work on it towards the end here and what we can do is we can go to the scale width and close this up by a touch and we'll go to the beginning of our timeline here we'll add a keyframe for position and we will move this over one. Let me turn off the linear wipe real quick so we can see where we're at. And I'm going to go to the X position and make sure that this is, this is at the beginning of the plate over here. And then we turn our linear wipe back on. We scrub through this. Or we go to the last keyframe here for the linear wipe. We go to the position X and we make sure this is going to be all the way towards the end here, just like that. All right. And then, of course, you might need to just adjust the keyframe depending on the timing of everything. And now you should have this white border that follows the animation of the lower third. And that looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's take the transition completion and let's bring this into to the couple of frames there. So now if we run through this, you can see that this white line, this white solid is on right on top of our plate. And it's basically the leading element for this transition reveal. And now what we can do is take like say our main title here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna click on nest. And I'm gonna call it uh, name, title, whatever, click okay. And the goal here is I want this name to be revealed as this white solid reveals on our text. Come over here and select the nest sequence here and let's grab the rectangle tool right here underneath the opacity window. And what we want to do is bring this down to about right here. Okay. And let's come over here and let's just bring out the points over here so we can stretch out our entire name like this. And that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as we can reveal our entire name like this. Okay. So let's add a keyframe for mass path. Let's say we want this to stop right here. We'll add a keyframe there. So click this keyframe icon. Let's go to the first frame here and let's come over here. Make sure the mask is selected. Just select the name mask one. And we come over here and we can move this over to right about the start here, right? So right there should be fine. And we run through this. Our goal is to make sure that the title kind of reveals on as the white line reveals on as well. So this is kind of a neat way to reveal this on so we'll just move this over by a little bit all right and what we'll do is we'll select this point here and we'll bring it over the white line right over here and we'll bring the bottom point and we'll do the same thing as well and then we'll go to the feather and we'll set this down to zero and then we run through this again we should be fine perfect and now our title is coming on exactly with that white line and of course if we want this a little bit further let's go into the sequence here let's select our title let's add a keyframe for position and let's move forward in time or sorry, let's move that keyframe forward in time by a couple of seconds there. And we'll just position off the, let's X position the title over a little bit. So now we run through this again. We can have a little bit of X animation with this reveal. So that's pretty cool. And now, of course, we can do this, the same thing down below as well. So for our subtitle here, we can do a very similar thing. I'm going to try to mix it up just by a little bit so we're not going to repeat this process and we can learn a new concept. So what I like to do here is maybe just do a basic reveal on for the plate, of course. So we'll come back over here, grab our plate, go back to the effects and grab a linear wipe and redo that transition. So maybe this time we'll do from the opposite side, of course. So set this to 100% and we'll start this over at maybe like one second ish. Add a keyframe for transition completion move forward in time by a couple seconds and set this down to 0%. Okay, so now what I want to do is take our title here and reveal it upwards with just no motivation. So what we can do, so what I like to do is once this reveals on, start it right here, add a keyframe for position, move this keyframe forward in time to maybe a second or two over and take the Y position and bring this down underneath our plate. So it'll be about right here. So we run through this real quick. You see that the title will just come up like that. You know, no big deal, looks cool. So what we're gonna do here is once again, nest the sequence, right click it and click on nest. And we can call this one subtitle. And then we're going to go and select the subtitle, go to the rectangle tool once again, and we're going to just make sure that this mask 
is going to be lined up perfectly with the subtitle plate. So it should be about right over here. Set the feather down to zero, of course, and just expand out the mask as you see fit here. So we'll come over here, it's like this point, expand it out this way, and it's like this point, expand it out over to the right as well. So now, if we run through this really quick, we'll have our subtitle kind of pop up in there. Of course, I'm probably going to want to go in there and readjust the position animation really quick. So maybe this will be a little bit quicker. And we'll just run through this really quick again. And we'll see what we have. So that's pretty interesting. And what I want to do with the subtitle. All right, so I went ahead and took the liberty to change some of the colors here. And if you want to change the color, you can just double click the color mat and change it to it. Or if you didn't duplicate the color mat in the projects over here, what you can do is go to effects and add, say, ramp to it and change both the start color and end color to the main uh, color of your text. And the ramp effect is underneath the video effects folder, generate ramp, or just type it in here at the top. And before we render this out, let me show you quickly how we can duplicate this to reverse the effect. So, so to about like three and a half seconds, come here, trim all the layers down a little bit and copy them, paste them over here. And what we can do is make sure all the layers selected here, right click them, click on nest and you can call it all or whatever, select it, right click it, go to speed duration and reverse the speed. And now, and it should be good to go. So let's go ahead and render this out and see what we have. All right, and after a render, this is what we have. We have our lower third and we have it reversed. So this is just a cool, quick way to create a good lower third inside of Adobe Premiere. Like I said, I always prefer using After Effects when it comes to doing motion graphics, but hopefully if you like using Premiere, you could take away a few techniques from this tutorial and apply it to your own lower third work. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, please be sure to drop a like on it because it helps me out tremendously and if you have not already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Adobe Premiere tutorials just like this and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks, those links are in the description of the video and always be creating.